Hey guys, and welcome back to what you not included, Clay's Amazing Space Colony Adventure Extraordinaire! My name is Twitchy, and today we're going to try and sort out our germy water situation. Yes, indeed, it's one of the problems that keeps creeping up repeatedly in almost any colony, and today I am going to nail that system. Now, to build the situation that I want, I'm going to have to get a few researches done. Uh, in particular, the sanitation, getting uh, plumbed toilets and sinks into place so we don't have to move water bottles around. Uh, normally, we do just build a big hole, get a, a bottle emptier, and then pour the polluted... Uh, polluted water into there to get rid of it all but that's not what we're doing today today as we've got a hot biome really really close to where i want all my water outputs we're going to put it there also if you're like twitchy you speed up your game but leave it like all the music really like tinny and stuff today's the day for you guys i remember to actually turn that off and uh put a little bit of extra music over the top you can hear that that's beautiful we've got like, accelerated gameplay and normal sounding music so as i say i've got this hot biome to the right of my toilet system here toilet block here and i know that if we raise any water over the temperature of 40 degrees centigrade we start getting a massive death of any germs it still takes a couple of couple of cycles to deal with it but that is my main plan now i start off by building a, a small tank a little bit further out literally to put the, uh, the the polluted water into but I very quickly realized that that is not not the way that we're going to do that I also need a fairly robust power system as always I'm gonna start off with the manual generators and as I actually upgrade to some sort of fossil fuels coal or natural gas we will rip all this down and replace it probably with a power transformer so that's like my major thing that I'm trying to get done right now but what do you know? I've run out of copper. I need to send people up to the top of the uh, the little sandstone sandstone biome that we are in here to uh, dig away some copper so that we can put it into the power system. Power, of course, just being mainly for pumping the water out. That is my main draw for power right now. Uh, there are, of course, other things I need to run, such as the uh, the sieves, the decontamination units, and stuff like that. But ZTech going around and doing the great job of digging up all the holes here to try and make everything think a-okay and then i think it's captain subs mainly going around to build with shrouticus doing most of the deliveries of course mad frank is on the research and another three is up on the the, the cooking in past series of me taking you through the gameplay of this particular wonderful game i've had this tendency to kind of like realize problems that i have and then throw down the jobs to fix those problems almost immediately and this sometimes ends up with quite a muddled series of events going on where duplicates are trying to work on many things at once i'm going to try to avoid that this series and really dedicate each episode to a specific problem like today is more it's all about how to deal with the germy water that comes out of toilets sinks etc there will be some little side jobs that have to happen every now and then but the main focus for each episode will be a a single uh, job. Today we are going around and following Captain Subs as he is pretty much the uh, the duel of the moment. He's going around, he's collecting the copper, he's building the items, he's putting stuff into storage, he's appreciating everybody's work of what's going around and as you can see through the day of watching him we've got the power sorted for the pumping of the water. Now this water reservoir is quite a small one, I've got a feeling it's going to uh, run out of its usefulness relatively quickly, but that's fine, we can work on that and, and hopefully with this system that we're working on now have a feedback loop that will keep our water stocks uh, pretty well in check there. Made a small mistake on the power system of not actually hooking up the manual generators to the batteries. Smart, I know. Uh, and uh, Mad Frank going through and working on those last bits of uh, of sanitation engineering. Where in particular, after the stuff to turn the polluted oxygen into regular oxygen and the polluted water into regular water, because germs tend to die off on those non-polluted substances. <laughs> That poor environment mixed with the heat from the hot biome, the chlorine and the hydrogen biome will in fact make it very easy to kill off all the germs in our polluted water. That's the end goal, but right now I don't actually have the water sieve, so I can't actually turn my polluted water into, into fresh water. So we're going to have to try and figure out some way of storing the polluted water for now. What I'm going to do is set up a small holding tank. Uh, yes, indeed. Once we've cleared out a little bit of space, you can see that I'm putting down uh, some of these storage compactors here. I thought that would be a good idea to like start getting the place tidied up and stuff, but what you know, I put them in a terrible place. <laughs> that will come back and bite us a little bit later on. Going through 
necessarily making sure that everybody's uh, priorities are set up right here. I was noticing that the uh, the architect was doing a lot of digging and the miner was trying to do some building. These are not the way round that we're looking for here. I, you notice that I am rejecting a lot of duplicates. I am looking for an operator, someone who can go around and do all the work of the power generation and stuff like that for me. That is definitely uh, what we're holding out for. And hopefully I have one that actually has a few backup skills as well. Another three may have been chosen with a single skill. He, all he can do is cook. And I decided that actually wasn't the best way to do it. At some point, we're probably going to have to uh, figure out a small euthanasia, euthanasia chamber. Euth euthanasia chamber? That's the word I'm looking for. Euthanasia chamber. Uh, and maybe upgrade another three in some way. I I'm not saying that we're going to kill one to replace it with the other. Actually, yes, I am. So on the right hand side of the screen you can see the tank that we are trying to build. It's got an a, uh, output in, if you will, a liquid output so that we can put some liquid in and a pump leading out. These are two things that are very important to make sure you put into a tank before you seal it up or start putting any dirty water or anything in there. Because you don't want your duplicates going for a little bit of a paddle in your germy water because you forgot to put the outflow pipe in. Not, not that, that I've ever managed to do that in the past. Oh, no, no, no. Another thing that I've managed to do in the past is to not put ladders going up to every single bit of the tank. So I made sure that was a thing. So I have noticed that we've got a lot of carbon buildup down the bottom here. And I'm not particularly fond of that. So I'm going to try and put some algae terrariums down there. A little bit of light uh, stuff like this just to try and get... Uh, the carbon being dealt with. Having having a small turnover of these gases is always a pretty cool. And make sure that we don't end up being completely swamped by like waste carbon dioxide. Another thing that I'm trying to make sure I do is sweep up the contents of any tank that I build. Quite often I end up just leaving uh, little piles of sandstone and etc behind. And I end up with building materials covered in, in food poisoning and slime lung and stuff like that. Obviously, a bad plan. Throwing some deodorizers, deodorizers around my, uh, my waste station, if you will. My toilets, my compost heaps, stuff like that. Just to turn, as I say, the polluted oxygen into regular oxygen. And then any germs that happen to be in that will slowly start to die off on the regular oxygen. If I wanted to bake the air as well, that would probably help uh, quite a lot. But my duplicates, they need to like walk and breathe through all this air and trying to trying to cook them is uh, it's not really what I'm after here. So I'm going to take the, uh, the opportunity this evening to have a quick look around the map. I couldn't see any geysers anywhere. And this is going to be something, a bit of a bit of a theme for the, for the next uh, little while as I carry on looking around the map, trying to look for geysers and unfortunately not finding any. Okay, so I have decided that the, the right hand wall has been built up high enough. So we're going to take down the ladders that are in there and try and clear away all the little piles of rubbish, as I say, that are in there. Really hoping that my guys can come along and finish that tank before too much else gets done with. And a small priority uh, reassessment will help that happen there. So I've already started noticing that Slime Lung is working its way into my base. That's uh, not great, but thankfully my duplicates, they're robust people. They can, they can take a little bit of Slime Lung in the air. And that also helps get rid of the Slime Lung. If my duplicates take it in, their immune systems start dealing with it. Instead of like whatever systems I have around me dealing with it. Uh, and there we go. That is pretty much an entire uh, water tank out in the in the hot biome. This is like stage one of dealing with your with your mucky water. Just get it away from your base. Just get it out of there. You you, you don't need it being dumped at the bottom of your base, uh, venting all its polluted oxygen up into your base and, and messing stuff up there. Uh, but don't worry. Never fear. That is not my full and uh, wholesome plan for the uh, for the polluted ox uh, for polluted water no no very much indeed though i have decided now that we've going to have two tanks one for clean one for d polluted water i'm going to need some sort of valve system on the go so what do you know more research for mad frank to get done tonight i am looking around at the top here and being like mm, my edibles starting to drop down i should probably think about putting some sort of extended farming system on the go and as i've just picked up these farming tiles i say just picked up as i picked up these farming tiles a little while ago probably the good time to be doing it and that is a good example of like side jobs that need to get done every now and then in these episodes 
So the next day is fairly anomalous for not just the reasons of trying to build the farm, though we are going to try and expand this out. I'm putting little farm plots down of eight wide. I start putting them into a room and then I'm like, wait, there's no farming room. Let's not try and do that. I mean, there is a farming room, but you need some far some like fur further down text. Also, welcome, sir. Steve can research and operate. And we're going to have them bouncing back and forth between those two jobs relatively often. But yes, you can see down below, we've taken that other farm room apart and turned it into the great hall that we have been after for a little while. Or actually, to begin with, it's a mess hall. That's no problem. It took me a little while to figure out why it wasn't a great hall. It looked like it only had to be like above 32, uh, 32 blocks in size. But it turns out, no, that is not the only requirement. The other requirement was, of course, that we need to put some uh, recreation equipment in there. Uh, two people getting the early meal down there, but the end of the day has come down. So uh, we don't, unfortunately, get to build the entire mess hall out and uh, have everyone being... Uh being seated for food. Checking a few of my stats here in the in the cycle report, everything seems to be going a okay. I'm particularly worried about things like oxygen flow, uh, oxygen production versus consumption, food production versus consumption. These are all things that I need to make sure that we're relatively in the green most of the time. The farms are taking a little while to build, and I can kind of get on board with that. And also down below, uh, these are uh, the algae terrariums are also taking a little bit of time to build. But then I have noticed a problem, and I don't know if you guys have noticed that problem i'm not sure if i fix it right here or fix it a little bit later but i've uh, i've dug out the area down below to being a one wide area next to that water one wide wall uh and and then i've told it to carry on building the wall so yeah here we go this is where i get a little bit worried i'm like actually no i i really need to build this wall into thickness before i start throwing water all over my algae terrariums which you know as long as you don't flood them too much they will will work through the water that is in front of them if a drip, drip feed for them is pretty good uh, I then also decide with uh, six duplicates, we probably need to get some more toilets. A set of two toilets can easily deal with uh, four duplicates, two in the morning, two in the evening. But when you start getting them having to share, uh, they can actually do eight within, uh, so two on each. Two, two for each session, if you will. Two per toilet per session. I, I like to have uh, a nice little a buffer of toilets there. And so we're at the sort of situation that I, I kind of said that I didn't really want to get into. But as it's only a few, we can live with it. That is the situation where we've got masses of jobs that need to be done. And we just need to wait for the jobs to be finished. And something that I find helps that a great deal is to pick certain jobs and prioritise them slightly higher. So that all your duplicates du uh, congregate in that sort of same area. One of the worst things that can happen when you are trying to do a lot of jobs like this is you end up with duplicates on each job and they all spread their, their worth over the really thin surface of all the jobs and they never really get things finished. I'm sure it actually works out to being the exact same amount of time but I feel a lot better when I'm getting jobs ticked off the list, bam, bam, bam. So I'm starting off with the outflow pipe because it's always nice to have the outflow sorted first. You don't want to be pol uh, producing polluted oxygen, uh, polluted water, sorry, without it having a way to uh, escape your colony. So I always make sure that I get my outflow done first, uh, then work on the inflow, the actual toilets themselves, stuff like that. I'm having a look at the temperature of my polluted water here, and I'm starting to think whether I've built it too close to the edge of the biome. It definitely doesn't seem to be taking on as much heat as quickly as I thought it would, which is uh, a little disappointing. But I also note that germs continue living on polluted water i'm like okay that's that's going to be a problem I've, I've got a feeling the two situations are going to like balance each other out cancel out if you will the fact that the heat doesn't quite kill enough germs for the population growth of being on polluted water i'm not sure about that but that's that's my theory on the go at the moment so what i'm going to do is try and condense all the polluted water down into a single point so that when I do come round to uh, replacing this tank I have an easier job of pumping all the water out. I also put a valve on the input here so that I don't have to rely on duplicates to come and throw some switches or anything like that. Valves have this wonderful uh, wonderful player input of a slide saying how much you want to allow through at any one moment and you can throw it all the way open, all the way closed or anywhere in between which means you have a shut off valve at player control that's brilliant a uh, top top tip for you guys there you can see down the bottom moving that slider around to turn it on and off now obviously i need it wide open because i don't have anywhere else to put water at the moment so we will uh, continue putting water 
over there. Another night time settles and most of the piping has been done outside the toilet but there definitely seems to be a bit of a slack of work going on up there. I'm not sure if I go and do anything about setting the priorities but uh, I'm just gonna let that run once we have another quick look for the geysers none around. Every time that I push a little bit further out in the colony I will have a quick look around. Unfortunately not really helping. So uh, one of the things that I didn't notice, is, well one of the things that I didn't know before now is there's almost like a pressure system on the go with the water. Ah quickly giving Zed a better job at like the next minor level up so that he can go and dig through the abyssalite because I want those wheeze warts. The temperature is going to start rising in my base very soon especially as we've cracked in to this hot biome and it's nice to have wheeze warts to just kind of counteract that. It's a little off topic, but this music in the background, I think it has to be my favourite piece of music in the whole of Oxygen Not Included. Okay, so that little oxygen area down the bottom, I have a small problem with trying to get over the lip of that water area. I've got sand above me, I don't want to drop sand onto stuff, so I've got to try and like dig into the side, taking the sand out before I take out the ground underneath it. It just takes a little while, and for some reason I think that's a good idea to now try and get a whole bunch of ice sculptures into my base. I'm like, oh, it's getting hot. It's time to put these things down. I don't fully think through the ramifications of what that means. Uh, we'll have some good fun when that happens. But as you can see, all the water flows from the new toilet into the tank there. Looking beautiful. I do set up the tiles to be changed to obsidian. Like maybe we can get them taking on a little more heat from the environment in that way. Obsidian, of course, are very, very good at passing the thermal energies through it. It is very thermally conductive. A strange system there. That wasn't actually any of the liquid leaking from the tank no no that was polluted ice in the in the cold biome melting gotta watch out for that gonna have to try and do a, something about that because obviously we don't want the entire cold biome melting it, in fact it won't it will only melt to like within a couple of a uh, couple of tiles into the base because the cold biome itself somehow just dumps heat some, somewhere in the world we've decided that it is finally time to illuminate this rock i uh, uh, it's amazing that we've gone for so long without any sort of illumination. Once again, adding credence to my theory that duplicants uh, can actually echolocate. Uh, they, they must walk along just clicking to each other. Or maybe that's what the, the noise is they make. That was a terrible noise. Maybe that's what that noise is that they make. It's the high-pitched noise. Uh, so I'm going around putting down a whole load of dig uh, jobs because any geyser that is hidden behind rock the neutronium underneath it cannot be dug. So if I see a gap in the array, I know that that's a place to go for. A little bit cheaty maybe, but it's a, a system that we are given as a player, so I'm going to make use of it. You can also see that I'm trying to... Well, it's, it's off screen now, but I'm trying to enclose the duplicate print machine. There, there that bit. That bit right there. Uh, because I want to make it a recreation room for my duplicates to go and hang in at, hang in at during the evening to get get more morale boost you know morale boost they're all good the higher the morale the better jobs we can give people and i've never really had top tier people for jobs so right now i've decided that the left hand side of the base doesn't have any storage compactors and we need to try and sort that out because we end up with uh floor detritus everywhere and it would be nice to be able to pick it up and move it with the minimum of movement time necessary one of the uh the, in fact the biggest draw of duplicate time in this game at least in the mid to late game is movement is getting your duplicates from one job to another. Early game, you kind of all compact into the middle and it's not, not such a big time. Cooking actually takes longer than it takes to walk from like farm to, to kitchen, say. But if the farm becomes a, an uber mega ultra structure, it might take some time to move across the farm. But then by that point, we've got our own farmer on the go and everything will work out. Hey, okay, so the, the night passes and we didn't didn't get the rec room going. In fact, we've only just got some of those storage compactors in place. And still, what is going on with this water tank over here? Jupes, you've got to get it, get it done. Uh, also, while I put that wall in place, it actually overspilled a little bit. Uh, and then you get to see that the algae terrariums actually just soak up those little bits of water that are on the floor. So that, that's pretty nice. That's pretty cool. Uh, the room doesn't quite... Uh, count as a recreation room yet and the reason for that is because the water cooler doesn't count as a recreation item which uh, uh, as a uh, sorry a decor item that's the word I'm looking for which is a bit crazy I really would have thought that the water cooler would have added decor but no nope, no nope, gonna have to add something else so there's a bisolite and oxalite area in the hot biome I've decided 
as much as it's nice to let that like leak oxygen into the area that's not actually going to help us all that much so i'm going to turn that into our clean water tank and you can see that i've also queued up the water sieve next to the water tank there so we can turn all our polluted oxygen into nice oxygen because the germs can't exist on the nice uh, nice water you, we, we've heard this uh, several uh, times before it's also going to just be good practice to turn all my polluted water into nice water as quick as possible i don't think i want to store any polluted water anywhere that's not well storage yeah i am going to want to have a little tank that i can empty polluted water into so that i could then pump it back up because we end up with various bottles of polluted water for various reasons whether it is polluted ice melting in the ice biome or the algae terrariums or maybe i need to put down a low-tech sink at some point maybe i'm on the far edge of the map and you, you just get end up with with water so i'm gonna need a polluted water input at some point now i could just throw the sieve in hook up the pipe and a little bit of power as i am doing down below there all the white line underneath the sieve is for power and then call it a good job you know the polluted water gets turned into normal water and, and we're all good and everything's fine but i think maybe i can be a little bit smarter about this and i put a valve in front of it just in case i want to shut it around to different places you never know i might end up needing polluted water for growing is it bristle blossom i know there is some definitely a a plant somewhere that needs polluted water so i uh, make sure that some of my my ladders go all the way up and down and start uh, pushing the priorities up for some of these builds particularly all the infrastructure for the sieve as i say and i think right cool good job done let's seal in that tank observant ones of you will have noticed that i've made a mistake already but that's fine we'll just uh, move on and not worry about that so far i'm also what like super 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 conscious of the amount of chlorine that is available in this biome i don't want all that chlorine falling into my base that is the main reason that i dug out that little trench underneath the walkway on the right is just so if i do have a chlorine spill it can catch i give sir steve the research job here because i want to uh, really smash through uh, some of these uh, science researchers here i can't remember exactly which one it is i'm trying to get through right now but i do know that's definitely the one i'm trying to do. i think it might be even automation i'm i'm dreaming for the future of where i can uh, write that uh, not write down sense the number of germs and the temperature of the area and sort of balance some machines around it accordingly so now that we've got the clean water tank sorted, we need to deal with the dirty water tank, the polluted water tank, because I don't want this polluted water hanging around. You can see it's already started to outgas a bit of polluted oxygen, and that means at some point we're going to have to deal with that. So I'm going to run a line going from that pump in the dirty tank out to just the other side of the valve so that I can turn their valve off and have uh, none of the water cycling around in a circle. I, I don't want that at all. I just want it going straight to the water sieve, which is... Uh, nice and easy i also have got my eye on those wheeze warts again uh, look there's the water flowing and it's working uh, beautifully there is a little bit of a situation where it goes back and forth and welcome brum to the group i can't remember exactly what uh what brum was good at i believe it was uh, uh things like uh supplying building researching it, there was a, a variety of things that was like i was just like you know what he's a good all-rounder we should keep hold of him so with my water purification system in place or at least the beginnings of it we're turning the polluted water into clean water and dumping it in a hot tank so the germs can die there i think it's time that we upgrade our toilet facilities our main and first set of toilets the problem is obviously i don't want to just close them straight down i opened another toilet block because i felt like the pressure was too much on this original one and so if i took out the original one the pressure would be too much on the secondary one so we're going to do it one toilet at a time or one one toilet system at the time because obviously the toilet plus uh, hand washing station or sink as we like to call it uh, is a, uh, a duo that needs to be kept together oh, of course it wasn't research it was artistic flair that was what Brum was good at and that was the one thing that I was missing so I was noticing that because I I think my personal reason because we're so close to the edge of the hot biome my tank is not getting as warm as i think it should be so i'm on and ahhing with the idea of a space heater at the moment i've not gone and done it straight away but i am definitely giving thought you can see that i'm starting to rip down some of those storage compactors that i sillily put in the way uh, and i ripped down another one next to it because i think it's uh it's good place to put a switch now i'm going to start with a switch but obviously that's one of the places i want to have a temperature sensor and then on the outflow of the water the clean water tank i want to have a germ sensor therefore the heat 
the space heater, that's the one underneath, uh, will keep pumping in heat as is what is necessary, and the tank will hold on to it until it is clean. I also put a whole bunch of insulated tiles down that side of my base because it's going to get hot there. I know it's going to get hot there, and that is a place to start bearing things in mind. I very quickly just went around with ZTech and dug up any uh, easily available algae on the surface of my base, or like in the surface of my base, if you will. There were a few bits I missed up top on the right and on the left, but these were not the, the big bits that I needed to get a hold of, uh, just to make sure that I've actually got some algae, because I noticed that my numbers were starting to drop a little low there. Okay, the space heater is on the way, and straight away that raises its own temperature up to about 50 or 60 degrees C, and then we are waiting for the convection or radiation of the heat to pass its way up through that bottom layer of obsidian and into the water. Now I made that obsidian specifically for its thermal conductive properties. And the other thing that I'm thinking of doing now is wiping out those storage compactors, putting a insulated area all the way around the two outside edges of my tank and underneath the space heater and turning that bottom area into a little like warming oven filling it with hydrogen because that is the most uh, thermally reactive gas uh, so that it can everything can travel from the space heater to the water as efficiently as possible another thing that i'm doing is going through and making it so other people cannot eat lice loaf my duplicates have been picking up it looks like the lowest quality food they have access to for a little while now and that's not what we want we want our duplicates eating some pretty high quality food so i make sure that every Everybody uh, can eat lice loaf, not what, well, or rather doesn't eat the lice meal, but does in fact eat the lice loaf. Zooming out for that wide angle overview of the colony here, it's all looking pretty good. And we're going to watch Brum make an ice sculpture here. I kind of wanted him to work on the insulation first, but as the ice sculpture was there, it's probably a, a good idea. The water all seems to be going down, and Brum very happy with his work there. Loving it, loving it amazingly. People going around doing a bit of tidying. It really is all about that insulation as we wait for the water to try and raise its temperature up above 40 degrees C. So it will start taking a little bit of germ damage there. That's what it's all about at the moment now a few of you might have been like but twitchy you're gonna end up with ridiculously overheated water and if you pump that into your base all it's gonna do is radiate the water the heat back into your base and you are right perceptive viewer well done but thankfully there is a cold biome just to the side of that so we can put all our water into the cold biome and let it cool down mistake has happened here where I forgot that the ice sculptures of course would melt why would I not think that they would melt so we've got a little bit of normal water dripping around inside the base I'm not actually that bothered because it's just water it's not full of germs it's got no problem the only th only thing that it's going to give a negative effect on is that our duplicates are going to get soppy feet and, and that's not great so uh, I've pumped all the polluted water out of the polluted water tank and we are now going to try and get rid of it at this point now we should not be dealing with any polluted water other than to pump it through the sieve to turn it into fresh water. So that tank there, that can be completely gotten rid of. I'm going to try and figure out another way, uh, hopefully closer to the sources of the bottled dirty water, uh, of putting a pump down to, to put it into the sieve. So we'll try and do something about that. And I'm also having trouble with the continued leakage from the cold biome to the right. The double doors are definitely going to help. Having them put up uh, is going to be a great boon to us here. Waiting for the pump to get made out of our big water system down the bottom and finally the last toilet gets put into place so we are officially all completely upgraded on the toilet systems and even the hand washing systems so that everything is going to be uh, a closed loop and internal so we don't have to worry about polluted water at any point looking uh, at my old tank you may have noticed there that I had to put a hole in the side because I didn't put a pump leading out of it of course at some point that that tank is going to be full of hot but not germy water and when that happens we need to pump it into the cold biome as i was just saying so that we can cool it down we're gonna have to face another problem there of cooling it down enough without freezing it one of the big problems could be the fact that we might end up freezing our our water in the cold biome uh, so we're gonna have to try and work around that and whilst i've got access i'm like okay well let's just put an insulated top on this on this uh, hot water tank as well that will help keep everything nice and contained so that we don't have like spillage of heat even though it is inside a hot biome i've got a feeling if i overwarm it it means it's going to bleed over to my base and i'm a little bit worried about that 
conservation of heat is definitely a problem. Or conservation of cold, really, I suppose, is the thing. The fact that heat gets passed around the base, around the map, is a beautiful part of this game. It uh, really, really speaks to realism, but it's uh, a little bit a little bit awkward to deal with if you don't think about things like wheeze warts and cold biomes and, and stuff like that. So, uh, having a look around, I'm thinking that maybe as we've explored so far to the right, it's time to start exploring to the left. But I'm afraid we have run out of time for today's little adventure, so I will see you next time when we're going to continue exploring to the left, chilling our uh, water down, and making some algae, because we're just about to run out of that. But I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!